Some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. This your boy Atlantic City. And this time we're taking... This your boy Atlantic City. And this time we're taking a look at Lewis Conrad. Now if you're not familiar with Lewis Conrad, he tragically committed suicide. And he is pretty much the reason to catch a predator ended the way it did or when it did I mean I'm sure the show wouldn't have ran forever but it might have went till 2008 2009 you know had Lewis Conrad not committed suicide and died bars lighter drop now I was digging for a little bit and for some reason I couldn't find his chat log I was like, oh no, damn, shit, because I really wanted to get into his chat log. Now, of course, I'm familiar with him, but I'm not that familiar with him. I don't remember that much about him other than the, you know, the standout moments. So, we're going to dive into the footage. We're going to dive into the chat log. Let's go ahead and get into... Lewis Conrad, the guy who not only killed himself, but killed to catch a predator. Hello? There's one more day left in our undercover operation, and perverted justice decoys are still in chat rooms. I got those other pictures, and let me tell you. Our investigation is about to take a disturbing turn. A decoy is hit on by someone you'd never dream could be involved in trying to have sex with a young teen. Assistant District Attorney for Coffin County, using big picks. We've had doctors, teachers, teach school, I'm in education. I'm a teacher. Even a rabbi show up during our investigations. But here in Murphy, Texas, just outside of Dallas, this is the first time we've come across an assistant district attorney. Oh. Assistant district attorney for Coffin County. What makes you think that's him? Because we trace it back to his MySpace. 56 year old Lewis William Conrad Jr. is a prosecutor in a neighboring county. Um, uh, whatever you'd like to do. He's been chatting on the phone with an actor hired by Dateline and online with a decoy from Perverted Justice. Um, and there's little doubt about what's on his mind. He sent penis pictures. Frag from yeah, Perverted yeah. Justice William alerts Conrad. police. He got pretty got sexual on the phone this recorded. We're chatting with him right now. I'd like to if you let me. The phone number he gave us traced to his home phone. Using the screen name in excess double zero, the 56-year-old chats with a boy who says he's 13. The prosecutor pretends to be a 19-year-old college student, sending these pictures of a young man who looks like a model. The decoy acts suspicious. You're hot and in college. You can get all the guys you want. Why me? To me, you're hot. Why? I like younger. Really? Like for boyfriend or just sex? Both. Later, the prosecutor sends pornography to the decoy. Oh, yeah, Is yeah, that yeah. your uh, Yes. It looks huge. Please don't trade it, Luke, okay? No, I swear. The chat I've continues on and off life. for two weeks. The assistant district attorney, in excess double zero, asks the decoy if he likes to kiss and cuddle. The decoy asks what he means. In excess double zero responds, holding each other, feeling all over. Later, the prosecutor says he'd love to see the boy masturbate. So when do you want to come over? Eventually, they talk about meeting in person. Well, you could bring some condoms. Uh -huh. Maybe you could bring some beer. But Conrad just never... Just the way the motherfucker says shit. It just makes me laugh. ...shows up. You could bring some condoms. Still, in the eyes of the law, it makes no difference. In Texas, he's already committed a crime. Murphy Police Chief Billy Myrick explains. It clearly states in the Texas Penal Code that actual contact with the child or an actual meeting does not have to take place. For a minute, did you say, no, it couldn't be? 
it's got to be a mix-up. Oh, it's yes. not going to be Bill Conrad. When I just hear that it's the chief felony prosecutor of a neighboring county, yes, I did. No, it can't be. You know, I think this is definitely a case. Well, it's not definitely. It is a case where, you know, you think, you know, you waltz into Target and you waltz into the stores and, and you see people and you see certain type of people and you look at... You look at one guy, and you're like, mm, he looks like he's in, into business. He looks like he sells, you know, business or some shit. You look at one guy, you're like, yep, I think he's a mechanic. You look at a girl, you're like, oh, she's a nurse. And sometimes you look at people, and you're like, yep, I bet he's a pedophile. But this case, I think, shows you that anyone can be that pedophile. A high-ranking official, I forgot his exact uh, the, the government-given title, but a high-ranking official engaging in these type of acts. It's not the type of person that you would suspect to be engaging in these type of acts, but he's doing it. I guess let's get back into the video. A lot of times and very loudly. I said, let's confirm everything. Let's make sure. Once the chief is certain he's got the right man, he takes his evidence to a local judge and gets an arrest warrant. He also decides to involve the police in Terrell, the town about 35 miles away where Conrad lives. We tried to make sure that because of who he was, that we took every precaution possible by contacting local authorities and the chief of the Terrell Police Department. Myrick and his team meet the Terrell police officers at a gas station near Conrad's home to discuss what to do next. We go along to witness the arrest and possibly get a chance to speak to the prosecutor. This sergeant, who has known Conrad for more than 20 years, has been put in charge. One thing I didn't ask you, does this guy have any weapons? I, I would have to say no to my knowledge right now. That's all I can say. Back at the gas station in Terrell, police are waiting for another judge to review the evidence and grant a search warrant of Conrad's home. They already have the arrest warrant. Their only mission on the, on the execution search warrant is to get the computer stuff and anything else associated with that and then bring it out. Right now, we're just taking this as he's any other normal citizen that has committed a criminal offense and we're going to execute an arrest warrant. Murphy Police Chief Billy Myrick and his team make a plan to arrest Assistant District Attorney Bill Conrad. He was caught chatting online with a perverted justice decoy posing. Okay, so his title is officially an assistant district attorney. As a 13-year-old boy. We're the ones that are supposed to be setting the standards and making examples out of things and enforcing the law, and he's not doing that. Just how graphic were the prosecutor's conversations? Remember, he pretended to be this 19-year-old. In his chat with the perverted justice decoy, he talked about wanting to watch the boy masturbate and holding each other and feeling all over. He sent oh, no. pornographic pictures. Mm, maybe we could take some pictures of ourselves. He also had a phone conversation with this decoy, during over? which he asked if they were going to have sex and agreed to bring condoms. He wants me to call him back. But for some reason, Conrad abruptly stopped chatting, and perverted justice discovered he deleted his MySpace page. Although Suspicious. Though he was invited by the decoy, the DA never showed up at our undercover house. But Chief Myrick says, in the eyes of the law, it doesn't make a difference. Conrad has still committed a felony. The law in Texas specifies that the meeting itself never even has to occur. As we mentioned earlier, because the prosecutor doesn't live in Murphy, Chief Myrick has turned over the job of arresting him to local police in Conrad's hometown of Terrell. A sergeant who's known the prosecutor for more than 20 years knocks on the door. We really hoped, as they knocked on the door, that Mr. Conrad would peer out through the peephole, through a window, whatever, people. and he would see a face that he would recognize. People who love peepholes and that he would easily open the door and talk and, and then we could approach at that time and say, this is why we're here. But Conrad never comes to the door. The police, however, can tell that he's inside 
They can see a TV and a computer are both on. So it appeared as though someone was right there just a yes. short while ago. That motherfucker was in there deleting shit. That's what he was doing. He was in there barricading himself in there. He was in there lock. He was in there deleting shit off his computer. That's what he was doing. Or he was destroying hard drives. He was trying to smashing them with his hammer and all that shit. I bet that's what he was doing. I bet that's what he did before he died. Yeah, maybe watching television, working computer at the same time. Since police, that motherfucker wasn't worried about no TV. This motherfucker got the cops outside his house, ready. To, he barricaded himself in. He, he's he's a high-ranking official. You think he's in there watching motherfucking Matlock? Come on now. He suspect he's inside, refusing to answer the door. The Tyrrell police right, call for backup. Brother. We're on the phone now, calling the tag team out to get them in line. Okay. Well, apparently going to have a little bit of waiting period because you know. Oh, you put good. together the tactical team. The police wait outside Conrad's home about 45 minutes until the tactical team arrives. There's still no sign of Conrad. The officers line up in formation and head to the back of the house. Took them that long to think then of that? we hear a faint crack as the officers force their way in. For almost five minutes, we don't see or hear oh, any so of Conrad. So, was that the gunshot? Conrad. The officers line up in formation and head to the back of the house. Right here. Then, we hear a faint crack. <laughs> the officers... Was that the gunshot? House. Then, we hear a faint crack. The officers force their way in. For almost five minutes, we don't see or hear anything. Then, Lieutenant Adana Barber of the Murphy Police Department comes out and tells us what happened. As they made entry, they confronted the suspect. I believe he's in the hallway, and he told them he wasn't going to hurt them, and then shot himself in the head. So that was the shot. They, damn, they got the shot on camera. That's kind of fucked up. That's kind of fucked up. They got the shot on camera. That must have been the shot. Damn. I never noticed that before. I mean, I've seen this before. I I'm surprised I never covered this before. But shit. Let's keep it going. Because we got a lot more to go. This this is going to be one. This is going to be a hell of a... Uh, a look at here. He had a pistol in his hand. Small caliber. It was a devastating tragedy, a shock to all of us when the 56-year-old, a man who has prosecuted criminals for more than two decades, shot himself. We watched as an emergency medical team arrived and hoped they could somehow save him. But as Conrad is brought out on a stretcher, it's clear his condition is grave. He is then airlifted to Parkland Memorial Hospital in Dallas, where he later dies. Conrad's boss, Ray Sumro, the district attorney in Rockwell County, has been critical of Chief Myrick, saying he rushed to make the arrest without consulting him first. You know, I, I believe that too. Normally I don't do this, but I actually wrote some notes. Of course, knowing me, I lost them. Where the fuck are they now? I can't have nothing. I can't have nothing. There they are. No, I didn't write many. It's just an index card. But I wrote, Handled Bad by NBC. This was definitely handled bad by NBC. And I think they wanted that on camera. They wanted that shit on camera. They wanted that shit to to boost ratings, to put on the promos, to say, this Sunday on To Catch a Predator, we, the uh, district attorney from Seattle, or wherever the fuck he's from, is arrested live on camera, on only on Dateline. You know, you know how they do. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm really sure NBC wanted to sensationalize the fact that they had a high-profile predator on their hands. They 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 call it a big fish, 
they tried to reel him in, and he said, fuck that. Fuck that. Y'all gonna, I'm gonna take myself out. So he took himself out. But yeah, this was handled by bad by, by the cops. It was handled bad in general. They should have arrested him at work. They should have just waited. They shouldn't even let him even be suspicious. They should have just fucking met him at work. And arrested him there. They could have filmed that. What was he going to do? Pull out a gun in his office? He might have. Shit. Who knows? But that suicide, that definitely could have been prevented. 100% could have been prevented. It was handled badly on all aspects in every single way. But let's get back to the footage. Where the fuck is the footage? Is it illegal to have sex with cheese? God damn it. Get away. I swear I didn't look that up. But it's still in my browser history. Uh... The Sumrall claims the chief was more interested in Dateline's cameras than in justice. Myrick strongly denies that and says he went by the book and even took the extra step of contacting the police chief in Conrad's town. From the police end of it, now you got reviewed by two chiefs. On the legal end, you got reviewed by two judges. And we all think we're making pretty sound decisions here and that it is time to do something. So this just wasn't the Murphy wasn't, PD saying, no, sure. let's wasn't go anything get. that was taken lightly by anybody. And then everybody took note of who he was, uh, all the way up the line. We all knew who he was. And nobody anticipated the kind of outcome that resulted. And certainly nobody wanted that kind of outcome. Another vocal critic, the prosecutor's sister, Patricia Conrad. She spoke at a Murphy Town Council meeting just days after her brother killed himself. My family and I have experienced a great deal of hurt and sadness over this situation. And I intend to fight as hard and as long as I can to prevent other people from becoming victims of such reckless actions as those taken by your employees, which were set in motion by a self-appointed group. A moment of silence for Lewis Conrad, please. Moment's over. Acting as judge, jury, and executioner that was encouraged by an out-of-control reality show. I will never consider my brother's death a suicide. For the record, since Conrad never uh, came to the house, was. there's no Sorry, indication man. that he knew Dateline was involved. Dateline's four-day investigation here in Murphy, Texas, ends shockingly with the suicide of a local prosecutor caught chatting sexually online with a decoy. Sometimes the prank is dressed up as a righteous thing. We have these child prankers out here Just all over prank, the place bro. trying to get kids the fuck is to this? meet this them is to not have what sex. I up for. It's a very scary situation. Mm -hmm. It was a Texas prosecutor. He was allegedly chatting online with somebody. Ah. Trying to get kids. Okay, here we go. Let's see. Let's see what they're they talking about. Able to catch a predator series. Is that you? Its premise? Anthony? Anthony's four-day investigation here in Murphy, Texas. Predators. He was... He was flying high with its wildly popular To Catch a Predator series. Its premise? To catch men seeking online to meet underage children for sex. This 53-year-old is be. bringing candy. I can't believe this. Did you bring my M&Ms? <laughs> what? No way. But what he has in mind isn't so sweet. Working with an internet watchdog group, NBC lured the men to a house where they were ambushed on camera. What says on the internet doesn't mean that's what I really think. Mm. Well, that would be easier to believe, Jeff, if you didn't yeah. show up here tonight. The then jail. they were arrested by police waiting outside. Trust me, you don't ever have to And if there's nothing else you have to say, then you're free to walk out that door. He walks outside no and is arrested Marvin. by that camouflaged officer. Police The show was a ratings dream until tragedy struck. It was a Texas prosecutor. He was allegedly chatting online with somebody that he believed to be a 12-year-old. But in fact, it was this um, plant sort of from this organization called Perverted Justice. In November 2006, a former North Texas district attorney, 56-year-old Lewis Conrad, shot himself when cops confronted him after the sting. He was Bill Conrad, a former Kaufman County DA, at that time an assistant Rockwall County District Attorney. He was to be To Catch a Predator's last and most notorious Murphy target. 
Patricia Conrad is his sister. And these people were acting as not only police, but judge, jury, and executioner. If you have a suspect who's not responding, do you storm his house? No. I don't I don't think so. I think it was about I headlines, think. making a splash, making a story. Look, I think if they had done that before, then maybe they'd have a case for it. But they never did that before. And then you can argue, well, they never had they never had someone as a high profile as that before. It's not like uh Jerry Wayne Martin Kosas was, you know, the mayor of Iowa. But he should be. But anyway, yeah, like, they never did that before. I just think it was handled really badly. And it killed the show. It killed the fucking show. Come on. No, nobody can support the way that that this particular uh, sting went down. Let's continue. Uh, jump into conclusions. You know, we've got something that's really going to bring up our ratings. Dateline was directly responsible for her brother's death by hijacking police procedure. I believe it, yes. She deserved the money. Dude, it was their fault. Come on now. Predator or not, you gotta blame NBC. Take a seat right over there. All right. So let's see what perverted justice talking about. Now, before we even get into the chat log, I think I want to go ahead and give my thoughts on this fuck. Look, he was a high-ranking official, and he was still willing to do this. What's to say? If that... If his, him potentially losing his high ranking job wasn't enough to, to prevent him from doing what he wanted to do, then what the fuck would keep him from potentially reoffending? So rehabilitation? Probably not. Would he do it again? Probably. Would he have did it had he went there? I think so. But let's go ahead and dive on into the chat log. Let's see what's popping in this motherfucker. Deciding to post Lewis Conrad Jr.'s chat logs and phone recordings was not a decision taken lightly. The fact is... Posting him was a call we internally debated for some time. How do you tactfully and gracefully do something like this? So we waited. 
and we heard the stupidity in the media. We heard his sister call us literally murderers. We saw his death called tragic by hack print reporters. We heard his buddy and boss try to use his position as the DA to attack our evidence. All while the sister, the buddy, and the hacks had never actually seen the evidence. <sighs> Calling this man's decision tragic is an insult to the word. Unfortunate? Sure. Tragic? No. Lewis Conrad Jr. killed himself because he knew he was facing an outcome more certain than the sun rising the next day. He was facing being convicted for being a sex predator. This district attorney knew he didn't want to deal with that, so he spent his time not answering the door for the police, holed up in his apartment trying to delete even more evidence. I told you he was deleting shit. At the end of the day, we don't mind if someone thinks that sex predators shouldn't kill themselves. Hell, we think sex predators shouldn't kill themselves either. We like to get the convictions. But don't call the man's death tragic until you see what the man killed himself over, what he did, and what he didn't want to live with facing the consequences of. Notes from contributor J. Alternative Lewis William Conrad was a textbook case of what I continually warn my friends with children with who have internet access about. Conrad found my character while surfing a gay bisexual site intended for teens. Posing as a 19-year-old, Conrad grew aggressive as my 19 as my 13-year-old character Luke showed a lack of interest in him. During chats, he sent additional pictures, hoping to groom and entice what he believed was a 13-year-old boy. <clears throat> This is the prime example of what these people will do to gain the confidence and trust of our children. Sometimes someone the age of 19 can be viewed by a confused, lonely 13-year-old as someone safe to talk to. Over time, a trust can be formed, and as we have seen and heard an unfortunate number of times, the end result can be devastating for the youth. Predators such as Conrad lurk sites intended for teens. They infiltrate online games with chat capabilities where they know children are. Any access they can find to the youth they will establish themselves. Like Conrad, at an age they know children can be comfortable establishing a friendship with them. This is why no chat is safe for children, period. Conrad chose to end his existence because he knew the, face, he, knew the fate he faced when incarcerated with those he fought to prosecute. He was a coward by preying on our children and left the world a coward, escaping the justice system in which he himself practiced. That was well said. I'm not reading all of that because we're still going to take a peek. This fucking guy. Lewis Conrad, what a fucking asshole. Took himself out, took to catch a predator out with him. What a fucking asshole this guy was. Shit dick. You hear me? Shit dick. But he can't hear shit. Man, his dick's probably rotted by now. Shit. But I think it was a lot. It was a lot of shit that probably led to. Him committing suicide. I think. He didn't want people. Being he was such a well-known figure, probably, in his town, I mean, I'm, I'm guessing he was well-known. He probably didn't want his colleagues, his, his friends, his family, all of that to know, even though they know. But maybe he just didn't want to face that. He was scared of facing that knowledge coming out about him. And there's also the job. You know, because of the job that he had. And he's going, doing this type of shit. I mean, if, you know, he didn't want to drive truck. So he, he said, fuck this shit. Check, please. But mainly, I think what did it was the motherfuckers rushing to his house. That shit was handled very poorly. They rushed up on his house. 
knocking at his door. That's what he might have did it anyway. He might have took himself out anyway. He might have did it a week or two after the news broke and his fan um his uh not fans, his family, his uh his friends, whoever. Once they once they turn their back on him or whatever, then he might have did it. But them rushing to up to his house like that, one hundred percent I think, is what led to that. I don't, he would not. I swear I do not think he would have killed himself that day, if that didn't happen. And you won't convince me otherwise. I don't think he'd have died that day. Now clearly he he was suicidal. Look what he did, but I, yeah, I really, I do think it, it may have happened anyway. It, it might've happened anyway. I mean, he was clearly willing to do it. So why wouldn't he be willing to do it two weeks later? After everybody turns on him, he's done lost his job. He's, he's, he's walking into Walmart and people are throwing, I don't know what does Walmart have. What can, well, they could throw anything at him from Walmart, I guess. So they're just throwing shit. They, get, they, get, they grab the fucking... Someone grabs a DVD. They throw it at him. Ah, it hits him in his eye. You know, he can't go nowhere. Everybody say, you can't shop here no more. Then he might go blow his brains out. But I don't think he'd have blew his brains out or whatever the fuck. I don't think he'd have did that shit that day. Had, had they not had the... All of that, all that shit forced him, I think, and it, it like boxed him in, and he was just like, "Oh fuck, fuck, fuck! What do I do? What do I do? What do I do?" And he just did it. And I don't think it would have happened had they not been at his house. If they didn't go to his house, I really, truly, one hundred percent do not believe that he would have killed himself that day. I do not. <clears throat> Excuse me, I really don't. I don't believe it for a second. And now, like I said, I'm I'm repeating myself over and over. It's definitely possible he would have he would have killed himself anyway. Maybe a week later, maybe a few days later, maybe the next day. But when it happened, when it did, it happened because they went to his house like that, one hundred percent. Now let's go ahead. Let me shut the fuck up about my opinions. And we're going to go to the To Catch a Predator Wiki. Lewis William Conrad Jr. No, I ain't changing that shit at the bottom. I'm not changing it to Jr. Was a predator who was supposed to be caught during the Murphy, Texas investigation. He shot himself before police could apprehend him. His death and fallout ultimately resulted in the cancellation of To Catch a Predator. You motherfucker. Conrad, an assistant district attorney living in Terrell, Texas, contacted a decoy posing as a 19-year-old university student named Will when he contacted someone he believed to be a 13-year-old boy named Luke. Conrad solicited pictures of Luke's penis and initially sent him explicit images in return. The images weren't specifically for Conrad, sp weren't specifically of Conrad, but all but one had a pornographic aspect. Conrad would eventually send a picture of his own penis. He also expressed a desire to do many sexual acts with the decoy, asking things to him like holding his penis and having sex multiple times. Eventually, a voice actor was brought in ah oh, fucking lost my spot hold on eventually a voice actor was brought in to play Luke over the phone for unknown reasons Conrad stopped responding to phone calls and instant text messages it was then decided by police to confront Conrad in his home in Terrell Texas for unknown reasons Conrad stopped responding to phone calls and instant messages it was then decided by police to confront Conrad at his home in Terrell Texas death a warrant for his arrest was signed in the after and in the afternoon because in the Texas because in the Texas what the fuck because in Texas the crime occurs when the solicitation is made and not when the perpetrators show up to the house. The Terrell police where Conrad resided made a decision to use a SWAT team and perform a tactical entry on suggestion by Dateline. 
Once the SWAT team arrived, they feared Conrad was aware of their presence and was now destroying evidence. They broke the door's lock and swept through the house. They finally encountered Conrad in a hallway holding a Browning 380 handgun. Conrad said, I'm not going to hurt anyone and shot himself. Recovery of all of Conrad's digital devices showed images of child pornography. Fallout The Murphy Police Department and its chief, Billy Myrick, came under fire due to the handling of the arrest because it was perceived that they had been taking orders from the Dateline NBC news crew on how to conduct the bust. <sighs> this was vehemently, vehemently, I hate that. I hate that fucking word. This was ve vehemently, vehemently, uh, how do you pronounce that shit? It was vehemently denied. Sounds like a fucking word from the 1700s that nobody uses no more. But some people still try to use it. You know, like, oh, I'm aghast. I'm aghast. Like, who the fuck says aghast? A G. H A S T. I'm a wordsmith. If y'all haven't caught on by now, I'm quite the wordsmith. So, I like to pride myself on knowing a lot of words. I know what vehemently means, but it's a stupid fucking word. Where was we at? This was vehemently denied by both parties until footage acquired by Esquire magazine had shown Murphy officers taking commands from Chris Hansen and Frag. Look at Frag running the show. As well as the Dateline crew set out in front of Conrad's house five hours before an arrest warrant was obtained. Setting up an entertainment rig complete with a DJ. With a DJ? Or with a DJ? Who is DJ? Can I meet DJ? as well as a catering service in front of Conrad's house. Them motherfuckers had craft services. Out, man. They went all out for this shit and look what happened. The man killed himself. They had craft services out there in front of the man's fucking house. Turn it in into a sensationalist media circus rather than a controlled surgical arrest. And then they should have just had one plain clothes cop walk up on that walk up to his door and knock on his fucking door. That's it. He wouldn't have fucking killed himself had that happened. Esquire also did, uh, detailed a deputy's re uh, redis reticence. Yeah, a deputy's reticence with going through with the bust to Dateline's producer and the desire to inform other officials with greater authority on whether to proceed. The producer told Deputy, you work for Dateline now. Hmm. Conrad's sister would sue NBC for $109 million, but was settled out of court for an undisclosed amount. The Collin County DA's office would also decline to pursue charges against the other men that were caught in the sting. This would force the end of the segment on Dateline NBC and would lead to the firing of Myrick in 2008. It was also shown that had Conrad not taken his own life and went to trial with the evidence the police had, much of it would have been thrown out because the warrant had an incorrect date for serving and an incorrect county. It was likely he would have been acquitted or the case thrown out. Are you fucking serious? He fucking killed himself and he would have got away with it. He fucking killed himself and he would have got away with it. Talk about a plot twist. Ain't that some shit? Oh, I ain't never saw that coming. God damn. Not that he should have got off, but the motherfucker killed himself. And he and, and looked like he was going to get away with it anyway. Ain't that some shit? Man, life's kind of fucked up sometimes, ain't it? Oh, man. Damn. Well, 
At least we got a predator off the streets one way or another, I suppose. Now a little bit of trivia. PJ was fond of using the Luke, the name, wait, fuck. PJ was fond of using the Luke name for their male decoys. It deserves mentioning that while Perverted Justice inserted timestamps in all of their chat logs showing time and date, the dates were conspicuously, conspicuously missing from Conrad's chat log. Chris Hansen admitted in a 2021 interview, Hey, how about you say where the fuck it came from for real? A Vlad TV interview. A 2021 Vlad TV interview that Chris Hansen had done. He said he feels no sympathy for Lewis's suicide, stating that I don't feel responsible for it. I sleep well at night and did after the fact. All right. All right, so we're going to take a look at the chat log next time because this is going to be a two-parter. Chat log is a little long and... We don't really need a one hour, 30 minute movie length video, do we? I don't think we do. So stay tuned for part two of Lewis Conrad. We're going to do the whole chat log. But before I go, you already know, dear Kayla Love Lauren, that shit it comes out on Mondays. All right. But you know what? New episodes of A Look At come out every Tuesday. That's what you're watching right now. And we got Interrogation of a Predator, a brand new season. It's a show that I used to do way back in the day. There's four seasons. You can check those out if you haven't seen them. New season, November 17th. Get ready for that. It looks like it's going to be Jeff Sokol. Uh, over 100 votes. I think it's at 113 votes now. Jeff Sokol's winning, and he's winning by a large... A large margin so even if 50 more people vote and they don't even vote for Jeff I still think Jeff's gonna win so congratulations Jeff you are the lucky bastard for interrogation of a predator season 5 and that's gonna start November 17th and that's coming every Wednesday so stay tuned for that but I'm gonna go ahead and get the fuck up out of here I don't wasted enough of your day. This your boy Atlantic City. Later. <laughs>